Good morning. And happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day to all of you here and all of you who are joining us this morning on Facebook. We are so glad you're here this morning. A few announcements for today. Uh, first off, I, I know we've been having visitors throughout the summer. We do have some blue visitor cards in the back. If you'd like to fill that out, if you would like to receive our weekly email updates or our newsletter or know more about um, our saviors. So please fill that out and you can leave that here. Next Sunday we begin coffee. And so after worship you're invited to stay for coffee and church donuts. So we hope you'll join us for coffee. Um, the fellowship team isn't going to be serving coffee every Sunday this summer, um, but you can see the church calendar for when we will be having coffee and donuts after worship. Uh, during the summer. Uh, this week is a quieter week at Our Saviors. We do have Welcome Bible Study on Thursday. Um, all women are invited to that, and that's at 10 o'clock. If you can volunteer at all this summer, that would be greatly appreciated. On the bulletin board out there, we have some sign-up sheets for communion helpers, ushering. We especially need ushers, lecturing. So if you can help out, please sign up. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for all of those on our prayer list. We pray for this country and the freedoms we have that we continue to um, better our country on this Independence Day. We also pray for Larry Hunstead um, as he is hospitalized. Those are the announcements I have. And so with that, we will begin worship with our opening hymn, God is Here. Please stand as you are able. Thank you. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. We take a moment for reflection. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our God of love sent Jesus Christ to bring us forgiveness from sin. God gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us in our lives so we can bring the light of Christ to all peoples. Know that you are a beloved child of God and God forgives all of your sins. Go and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. God of power, open our eyes to your kingdom. Help us to see it around us and guide us to find ways to bring your love to this world. Let your power shine forth through us as servants to your creation. We pray this in the name of the greatest servant in your kingdom, Jesus Christ, our Lord and example. Amen. Please be seated. And today we thank Lene Flato for sharing special music with us. And uh, later on in the song, God Bless America, um, just be watching Lene and she'll cue you in and you can join in that final refrain.
The reading for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you may be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Word of life, word of God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Luke 17, verses 20 through 24. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there it is, for in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. Then he said to the disciples, The days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you will not see it. They will say to you, look there, or look here. Do not go, do not set off in pursuit. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, now I want to invite the kids forward for a children's sermon. Come on up, you guys. (laughs) From all the way in back. How's it going? Great? Not as much energy as your little brother? Come on! That was exciting. So, in the gospel we just heard, Jesus talked about the kingdom. Now, if I say the word kingdom, what do you think of? Does anything come to mind? Do you think of kings? How about queens? Or dragons? Or, I don't know, people riding on horses in full armor, just gallopy, 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 you know? Right? You think of that cool stuff. Well, I've got a sword. Um... It's not that cool of a sword. I want to get like a Gandalf sword from Lord of the Rings. It's like nine feet long and it's made of solid steel. But Alyssa says, uh, absolutely not. And she is right. I shouldn't get that sword. But I have this because when I think of the kingdom, I think of something very specific. I think of knights. And the purpose of a knight in a kingdom is to protect it, to do good for the people of the kingdom. And that is who we are in the kingdom of God. We trust that God is our Lord. God watches over all of this, but we are knights of the kingdom. And that doesn't mean that we get swords. That doesn't mean we get all the cool armor or anything, but it means we have a purpose. We're here to show the love of God to everyone that we meet. We're here 
to help people with whatever we can do for them. So, this is goofy, but usually when someone is knighted, they're down on one knee. So drop down to one knee, and for those of you in the pew, imagine you're on one knee, okay? You don't have to get down on one knee. But usually, this is how it goes. Do you promise to protect the realm? Do you promise to do good for the God that we serve? Say, yeah. Sure? Okay. Arise, knights of the kingdom of God. Arise. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's say a word of prayer. Repeat after me. Perfect. Holy God, thank you for your kingdom. And thank you for your love. Help us to be knights. Showing your love to all the people we meet. And all God's people said, Amen. You can go back to your seats. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I love the 4th of July. I do. It's so wonderful uh, because family gets together. After this last year, I, I didn't see my brothers all that much. I got to go and see my parents occasionally, especially after getting vaccinated, but we just didn't get together in the same way that we normally do. And that was really hard. I mean, it was really nice not having to see my brothers, but I was surprised at how much I missed them. You know, I missed being annoyed and frustrated. I missed not having angry political conversations at 3 a.m. while we play video games. You know, you just miss those things. But yesterday, I was up at my parents, and I got to hang out with my brothers. I played in the lake with my nieces and nephews. I did some fishing. We had hot dogs and cheap German potato salad, and it just felt like every year, you know? It felt like normal. And I love that because the 4th of July is so powerful because it brings people together, and we have all of those wonderful things, the, the grill outs and uh, fireworks and all of those big celebrations. But beyond that, The 4th of July is a reminder of our history as Americans. It's a time for us to celebrate those people who have created this country, those people who are still working to make this country uh, into the promise that was made in the Declaration of Independence and in the Constitution. It's a chance for us to think about what it means to be an American. And so that kept ringing in the back of my head as I looked at the texts for this week. And it really made me think about something. The first reading that we had was Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the church in Corinth. And he gets into this deep philosophical, theological question. To whom do you belong? Some of you say you belong to Apollos, who was another apostle who came and taught. Some of them were saying that they belong to Paul, and some were saying that they belong to Christ. I kept thinking about what that meant to me, because for a very long time, my primary way of understanding myself was I was a student. You know, I had been in school for a long time. And then I got married, so I was a husband. And then I became a pastor, and things got more complicated because how would I define myself? Was I a pastor first, or was I a husband first? And then I became a father, and everything got thrown up in the air. 
because those three things really define who I am as a person. That's when it kind of stuck in the back of my mind. A difficult question that has been bothering me. Am I an American or am I a Christian? Which one matters more to me? It's a really weird question. And especially on 4th of July, it's a hard question to ask ourselves. But it's something we need to think about. In recent years, we've seen a rise in something called Christian nationalism, which those words sound good. We celebrate our nation, we celebrate our faith. But Christian nationalism is tied to some pretty horrific things. Things like kicking people out of this country who don't believe in the same God that we do, or who don't think the same way. Christian nationalism is tied to white supremacy, to meet Nazi organizations. And so I kept thinking about this. How do I define myself? How do I understand who I am? Because I am proud to be an American. This country has done so much for me, and it's such a blessing that I get to grow up that I got to grow up in this country, that I get to grow old in this country. But how do I define myself? How should I define myself? Do I belong to the democracy of America or the kingdom of God? As I was writing this sermon, I was really worried. Because I know how politically divided we are as a country. And I know that asking a question like that can seem like I'm trying to put down America. I'm really not. I'm celebrating what it means to be an American. To recognize the wonders of this country. And the failings of this country. To wonder what we can do to make this country better. Because ultimately, I belong to the kingdom of God. We all do. We are beloved children of God, and that's where we need to start. Yes, we are Americans as well. We are parents and siblings and friends and everything else. But we do have to remember that first and foremost, we owe our loyalty to the kingdom of God. The kingdom that was created by the one who spoke creation into being. The one who knit us in our mother's womb. The one who loves us and sustains us still. And the one who pushes us to do better for our country. I think when we put the kingdom of God first, the United States becomes better. When we put the kingdom of God first, we work for the betterment of all of the people around us. That's what the founders were hoping for in their own way. But this kingdom that we work for, this kingdom that we live in, It's not a place. Jesus says as much. There are going to be people who say, look, the kingdom of God is there. Look, the kingdom of God is over here. But the kingdom of God is a mindset. And the kingdom of God is an action. The kingdom of God is how we live our life. How we reach out to others how we show love and forgiveness, and how we work for each other. That's what it means to be a child of God. Not that God is putting you first, but that you are putting God first. 
Because when we do that, we don't take power. We don't take, we give. We help, we guide, we lead. And we follow the Lamb. We follow the Shepherd. We follow the One who died on that cross for us. So on this 4th of July, I am proud to be an American. I am overjoyed to be a husband and a father and to be a pastor. But I know that deep down, in my heart of hearts, the most important thing that I am is a beloved child of God. I need to know that. I need to know that God walks with me, that God is, is always with us. So we go and we celebrate, but we remember our mission. I wasn't joking about the knights of the kingdom. That's what we are. We go and we bring the love of God wherever we go. That's what we're here for. That's what our lives are for. That's who we are. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this country. We give you thanks for the freedoms that we enjoy. And we give you thanks for the mission that we share. Send us out to bring hope and life and freedom to each other in this town, in this state, in this country, and in this world. Help us to see that your kingdom reaches beyond us. It reaches beyond borders. It reaches across this world. And it unites us in the gifts of baptism. It unites us at the communion table. And it unites us in what we share together, the gifts of your love and mercy. Help us to reflect that joy to the world. Help us to know deep within ourselves that we are your beloved children. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and will join in our hymn of the day, Build Us Up, Lord.
We continue with the confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. We trust in your goodness and give thanks for your bountiful creation. Bring rain where there is drought and protect those who are in danger from the high heat. Lord, we pray. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. On this Independence Day, make us grateful for the freedoms we have and direct us to use our freedom to work that will bring justice and liberty for all. Lord, we pray. God of healing, we bring before you those in need of your healing presence. Strengthen those who feel weak, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need, especially Larry, Dan, Merle, Russ, Dixie, Sharon, Joyce, Dave, Tom, Pam, Keith, Sharon, Khan, Linda, Michelle, Tom, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, we pray. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. Help us to be living examples of your grace and your generosity. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. On this holiday weekend, bless those who are traveling and bless those who cannot be with us here today. Help us all to find times of refreshment and rest. Lord, we pray. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share God's word, peace with one another, and we'll do that safely.
As we come into our time of offering, <clears throat> uh, we're reminded that our offering plates are in the back of the sanctuary or over by this door, and we also have our online giving portal on our website. Let's join in our offertory prayer. God of wisdom, in your Son, Jesus, you show us the way of life. You teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts fruit of the earth and harvest of our labor, and lead us always by your wise guiding. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today for communion, our ushers will release you row by row, and you'll come forward to one of the two stations. Uh, You'll receive a piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer upon request. And once you've eaten that, you move to the next person where you'll receive Um, a cup of wine, or of grape juice. If you'd prefer grape juice, please put up your index finger so our deacon can know that's your choice. And once you've finished with that, we have baskets on either side of the sanctuary for you to place the empty cup. With that said, this is the feast that we celebrate as beloved children of God. Come, eat, and be filled. Christ has set the table.
Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you're able to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing our sending hymn, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.